Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's BEX Asia's technical webinar series presented by Conserve IT and hosted by BEX Asia. My name is Patsy again, and I'll be your MC for this session. We are delighted to welcome everyone back and hope that you have obtained insights from the past few days with hearing from many of the region's leading solution providers in Asia's built environment. Before we get to the session proper, I would like to encourage everyone to send in any questions relating to this session via the Q&A tab on the right-hand side of your screen. The speaker will try to address them towards the end of the presentation and during the Q&A segment. Today's this session's topic is titled Reduce Energy Consumption of Your HVAC Systems Using Smart Machine Learning AI Based Chiller, Plant Control and Optimization Systems. To begin, we have a question for our audience, which you will now see in the poll section on the right-hand side of your screen again. I welcome you to have a look, consider this question, and kindly register your vote. We are happy to welcome Chirayu Shah back today to share how this session can actually help you improve, um, improve and reduce energy consumption in your chiller plant. Chirayu Shah is the Vice President of Operations at Conserve IT with over 19 years of experience in the automation and controls industry. He started his career in India in 2002, working on special purpose projects with multiple government organizations in various fields of research. Shah has considerable experience in technical product and application development, product distribution and support, as well as business development in smart buildings, H to cloud IoT solutions, building automation and analytics, as well as energy and efficiency industries. Without further delays, Shirayu, we would like to turn on the camera and microphone. Uh, yep, thank you, Betsy, for the introduction. Welcome, Chirayu. Before I hand over the session to you, please allow me to take a quick look on the poll results. And I can see that uh, based on the questions, uh, what is the kilowatt or ton efficiency for your plant room? We have a vote of 71.4% for 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. When you are ready, I will hand over the session for, to you and to kickstart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patsy. And, uh, and thank you everyone you know, for helping us uh, answer the poll. Uh, I mean, like we we are aware that you know Singapore is one of the advanced markets uh, globally, and uh, the and, and the chiller plants are very well optimized in this region, and generally they trend very well as as, as we talk about energy consumption. Uh, but when we uh, you know use a smart technology like what I'm going to present today, uh, using uh, you know machine learning as well as AI, we can improve the chiller plant efficiency by even more. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Patsy, and I would like to thank IBEW as well for the opportunity to you know allow me to present today. Uh, as you can see my screen now, uh, I will I'll be talking about how we can use uh, you know machine learning and AI techniques uh, to further reduce energy consumption of the HVAC systems. Uh, so this is uh, the brief agenda of our presentation today. Uh, we'll obviously talk about the background and the common challenges uh, that we all face today in this industry. Uh, then uh, the solution approach that we can have using AI or the artificial intelligence model. Uh, then how do we use Plan Pro, which is our smart machine learning chiller plan controls and optimization system. Uh, how, how, how do we use that and fit it into this overall solution? Uh, what are the different uh, artificial intelligence based uh, machine learning methods that are used in our solution? And at the end, I will also share a success story at a local building in Southeast Asia. So that will give you more context of how Plan Pro actually works in this setting. Uh, so, you know, just a brief background. I'm sure most of you are aware that buildings are responsible for almost a quarter of the carbon emissions globally currently. And that is growing. But that number is growing every day. Uh, everything is now, you know, running off electricity. Uh, the, initially, it was just the HVAC and the lighting. Now, you know, there is televisions, there is lighting, all smart devices. Everything in a building requires energy and requires electricity. So buildings are one of the highest, you know, consumers of energy, as well as they emit the most amount of carbon emissions. Uh, so 
Uh, and so to uh, verify that, uh, you know, almost 200 countries have ratified the, the UN Paris Agreement, where everyone has committed to reducing the carbon output as soon as possible and uh, bring the global warming to below two degrees uh, of its current levels. And different companies uh, have, have adopted different rates of how they will achieve this. Uh, but significantly, you know, everyone wants to get there by 2030 uh, in that range. So how do we get to that, uh, uh, you know, target that we have? What is our pathway to get to net zero emissions from buildings? Because they are one of uh, the largest emissions, uh, uh, you know, contributor. Uh, obviously we need to improve the energy productivity. Uh, so you need to optimize, uh, you know, how our systems work and use less energy for providing, you know, the fully. Uh, we also need to then reduce the demand using optimum, uh, optimal load management. Uh, then this is something that is happening more and more uh, is uh, introduction of on-site renewables. So renewable sources are being added to the existing uh, you know, supply of, of energy sources. So either it's an on-site generation with or without storage, uh, that could be battery storage or thermal energy storage, uh, and you know, using PV or, or like geothermal, uh, uh, which is the chillers. And uh, at the same time, doing peak demand management. So, you know, I'm sure most of you also have to pay high peak demand charges uh, when there is a lot of uh, uh, requirement from the grid. So how we can manage that. So that's, you know, like the premise. Uh, now, when we break that down into buildings, uh, we sort of know that the HVAC systems, you know, consume almost half of the total energy of a building. And out of that, almost 80% of the energy is consumed by the chiller plant. So obviously, you know, making the chiller plants more efficient and the HVAC systems more efficient uh, goes a long way into saving energy, reducing the energy efficiency, uh, and you know, uh, uh, getting us closer to the net emissions pathway. Uh, so going on from the background, like you know, what are the common challenges currently that we face in the industry today, in the building management industry today? Uh, 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 you know, uh, the number one is inefficient operation of HVAC equipment. Uh, the second is the amount of system downtimes that can happen, which again, you know, causes the systems offline. We need to allow for more redundancy and, you know, we need to get people in to do service ad hoc instead of having like, you know, a data driven maintenance strategy. Uh, then obviously there is a lot of, uh, you know, there is a lack of automation and control. Uh, and by this, I just don't mean uh, you know, just having a uh, fully automated system. This is also having a fully optimized system, making sure that we are running the equipment uh, that is required, that is the most optimal piece of equipment uh, that can run at that point of time to provide us the required outputs. Uh, and, uh, you know, essentially people do use BMS systems and the BMS systems, I would, I would admit and agree, in, in Singapore are, are pretty smart uh, because, this, uh, because the standards set by BCA are also pretty high. Uh, so getting around, you know, a, a, a plant kilowatts per ton of 0 0.6 or thereabouts is, is common in Singapore, which is not very common in other parts of the world. But a BMS can only take you, uh, you know, so where, uh, uh, but then if you need to get even more savings out of that, you definitely need something which is a bit more smarter. Uh, and on top of that, you know, uh, uh, when we do introduce renewable sources, uh, there is even more issues where, you know, uh, 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 like uh, we do not have enough data uh, of renewable sources, how they are used, how renewable sources as well as electrical sources we have today, energy sources, how they combine well together. Uh, then if we are using solar as a part of the renewable sources, uh, we could have intermittent usage of solar availability as well as storage systems. And, you know, we could have different fuels like gas, electricity and other things with varying, you know, uh, prices that you know, it costs you more in the afternoon, it costs you less in the evening and the nights. So we have to take all of those systems into account and all of that into our solution approach. Uh, so essentially the key question is, how are we going to deliver benefit to the end user using real-time data and predictive modeling capabilities? And uh, on this slide, uh, you know, as you will see, it will come up for you very shortly uh, in the presentation is, uh, the solution approach that you know we propose to use using AI. So obviously at the bottom is going to be your central chiller plant that is gonna supply the chill water to the buildings uh, and the water returns back. On top of that, uh, we uh, propose to put in a smart machine learning chiller plant solution, uh, which would be a product called Plant Pro. 
and then uh, there is going to be an optimization platform on top of that, which is the model predictive control and an AI based prediction engine in there. Obviously, you know, there's going to be different inputs, measurements, weather series, and on the output, we will see the calculations of the NPC, which sends back the controls to the central plant controller. And that obviously is going to send back controls to the central plant cooling system. So a very high level architecture of the solution approach using AI. So now, how do we fit that into the product range that we have today, which is Plant Pro? Uh, so Plant Pro is a smart machine learning chiller plant controls and optimization system. Uh, and it's an acronym for Plant Room Performance, Reliability, and Optimization. Plant Pro is a complete hardware and software solution that enables optimization of control of your chiller plant, as well as enabling up to 30 to 40% of annual energy savings. Plant Pro can integrate with your BMS systems on site and can work with or without BMS systems. In Singapore, you're generally gonna have a really good BMS system. So what we will do is we will use Plant Pro as the brains of the system and the BMS can act as the arms and the legs. Uh, the Plant Pro solution is a full solution, which is the edge controller, uh, the dashboards, as well as the reporting. And when we say the dashboard, the dashboards include the machine learning capability, the control algorithms, the alarming, the trending, everything is built into the software application. Uh, Plant Pro uses the state of the art technology. So Plant Pro has AI machine learning backed data models, which are used to uh, see how the chiller plant is operating. And we are then using that information to make well-informed real-time decisions, as well as uh, modifying the models based on the data learned or the data collected. We are just not relying the factory data that is provided by the HVAC manufacturers. We also take into consideration the real-time data collected and make decisions real-time. All the data is not sent off-site into a cloud server or, or you know, another system that does the modeling and sends information back. Everything is done on-site, inside the building premises, on the controller that sits, and the machine learning happens live. All the data also stays inside the controller. So the end user or the building manager owns the data. It's not sent off to an off-site uh, server for security purposes. Then Plant Pro also uses AI to automatically generate control algorithms. So based on the information input into the system, as well as the data collected, uh, we automatically generate different control algorithms uh, that would best suit uh, the, the plant configuration and the plant system. Uh, this has been an ongoing development for over 10 years. So now the product is very mature and very robust. And we've got really, really good results globally. We even have multiple chiller manufacturers who OEM this technology and they sell it as their own system, as their own central plant optimization system when they sell their own chillers. Uh, plant Pro will also provide you automated alerts when the operations deviate from the target efficiency level as well as from the target performance level. And obviously uh, we can use that uh, uh, to do predictive maintenance as well as predictive work uh, to ensure that the system does not fall down and there is no costly repairs needed to be done at a later stage. Uh, so, I mean, like, you know, you've got the premise for Plant Pro. Uh, now, you know, I mean, I'm sure everyone is thinking, what exactly is it work uh, and what does it do for me? So, on this slide, uh, our, uh, uh, so when the next slide comes up, you will see. Uh, that Plan Pro, uh, the functionality of Plan Pro can be defined into six different steps. The first step is chiller plant performance monitoring. Uh, what this means is that we are going to create a full digital twin of your chiller plant inside the Plan Pro software model. So we will be uh, setting up how many chillers you have, how many pumps you have, how many cooling towers you have, how they are associated with each other. Is it dedicated pumping one to one? Is it headed pumping? Uh, and so and so, you know, are there VSDs involved? And then uh, also the design parameters from the manufacturer that are provided are added into Plan Pro to create the digital models uh, on top of the digital twins that are created. Then those models are then used to uh, uh, then compare the performance of the actual HVAC equipment against the real time performance of the equipment. So we will see what the real time performance of the chillers is, the pumps is, and the plant group is. So what is the real time kilowatts per ton for my chillers? What is the real time kilowatts per ton for my pumps? 
what is the real time kilowatts pattern for my cooling towers and for my whole plant, whole chilla plant. And at the same time, because we have the modeling done and the digital twin set up inside the plant pro software, uh, we will then predict what the best performance for those equipments should have been at the same point of time. Then the best performance is then compared against the real time performance. Uh, and uh, uh, that is uh, then you know going to give us a gap or it's going to tell us that yep, now everything is fine. So if my real time kilowatts are done, comes up to be say 0 0.6, uh, and my best performance or my pro kilowatts pattern that non pro calculates that the system should be able to uh, be achieved uh, at this particular point of time comes out to be 0 0.56. Then obviously we are missing out on you know a 0 0.04 in terms of my performance, in terms of my efficiency, and I'm using more energy to produce the same tonnage of cooling that I need to do. Now that could be because of a few different reasons. It either could be just that you know the control algorithms need to be tweaked dynamically to suit the current conditions, or there is actually a physical issue in the system that is causing the system not to perform as efficiently as possible. So it could be the heat transfer is not happening correctly on the chillers, or you know uh, there was a service technician who went out to site, he logged the BMS, who, sorry, he logged the VSD at a fixed speed, or he turned it off. Uh, there could be various things, you know, the machine is running low on gas and so on. So all of that, uh, uh, so when there is a difference and it's a substantial difference, then Plantro's analytics and FDD engine automatically starts looking into the gaps. What could be the issues? And then not only tell you and give you insights, but also guide you towards the root cause of what the issues could be. And so that information can be used to then, you know, make sure that uh, the chiller plant room is always maintained predictively uh, rather than having to send someone to site when something breaks down. Uh, on top of that, because we have all that information, even the chiller plant controls and automation can be done in the most efficient way uh, and the optimization. So, you know, obviously all the standard strategies, uh, you know, chill water resets, condenser water resets, you know, smart staging and sequencing, uh, you know, smart flow optimization, uh, all of those things uh, cooling tower uh, optimization, condenser water optimization, everything is done and we can do it in a way where uh, A, we use the machine learning models uh, to push, uh, you know, the set points and the limits of the system uh, uh, without damaging the HVAC equipment. Of course, all of this is done within the realms of safety. So, you know, as I said before, PlanPro is an acronym for plant room performance, reliability and optimization. So optimization is done only after we achieve the performance and the reliability. We are not doing optimization at the expense of reliability. And on top of that, uh, the system allows you to continuously commission and fine tune your, your chiller plant operations uh, at every second, every minute. So it gives you the live visibility of what is happening and the system tells you if something's wrong, even like highlighting an, an error in the heat balance or even sensor calibration issue. So all of these things are then brought out uh, in advance. Uh, just going in a bit more detail of how the plant pro system works. Uh, essentially, there is a lot of data that we measure. Uh, so per chiller, there is about 15 to 18 points. Then for each pump, there is another six to eight points and for cooling towers, the same. And then there are common points across the chiller plant system on the common headers, as well as you know the decoupler lines or the bypass lines. Uh, plant pro is a system for your chiller plant only. We are not looking at the air side optimization with plant pro. We got another system called Airflow, which looks at that. But today we are only focusing on chiller plant optimization. So we look at everything on the water side. We measure all the key data points, and then we calculate the efficiency of every machine as well as ancillary devices. Everything is available to you on the user interfaces or through on-demand and scheduled reporting. But then that information is taken and you know verified against the design data and the best case efficiency modeling that is done using the machine learning. And the total plant efficiency is then taken into account and compared with the design information. Using that gap, we are then diagnosing the issues uh, which may be causing the gaps. And then either we are you know, sending people out or personnel out to fix the equipment or you know, do the service and maintenance as required. Or if it's a controls and automation issue, then everything is adjusted automatically to make sure the plant is working in its most optimized state at that point of time through automation. Now, again, what else is the value proposition for Plan Pro? So Plan Pro works on any type of chiller, 
it, it doesn't need to be just a water cooled or air cooled absorption. Like you can even have a mix of chillers in your same plant room, it doesn't matter. You can even have any compressor type within your plant room, even a mix of compressor type within your plant room. So you can have two centrifugal chillers and a screw chiller, absolutely no issues. Plant Pro works very well in a retrofit environment as well, not just in a new environment. So if you had an inquiry or if you had a system where you know you had a baking machine, a train machine, and a carrier machine, absolutely fine, no issues. Even mixing and matching multiple manufacturers is completely fine because the plant pro system can learn the performance of any machine or any pump. Absolutely fine. The plant pro system you, is based on the proven Niagara framework from Chirium. So it can integrate with typically any BMS and any equipment on site, as well as plant pro provides high level interface mapping with various chillers. As I already mentioned, that plant pro is already OEM by three different chiller manufacturers already. So we have a lot of inside knowledge of working with chiller manufacturers and how HVAC equipment should work. Uh, and the automatic mapping is already provided for a lot of the standard manufacturers. Again, I would like to highlight that Plant Pro is installed and deployed inside the building premises within the customer's secure IT network. It is fully independent of cloud. So all the cybersecurity risks are covered. The Plant Pro controller sits inside your building. It doesn't, then no data is ever sent out. The only way to log in or connect to the system from outside the network is using uh, the recommended security with a VPN solution uh, or through the customer IT uh, you know, requirements. So it's, it's completely safe and it sits inside your building. Uh, on this slide, you can see a possible architecture uh, for Plant Pro system. The Plant Pro controller will sit inside your building. Then there will be a secure VPN channel or a connection. Uh, which will then be talking to your existing BMS systems because typically I know in Singapore, uh, BMS systems are going to be connected to all the equipments. They will have all the sensors and everything required. So we can just have one connection into the BMS system and get read and write all the data from the existing BMS. So we can reuse all the information that is available in the front room. So we are not adding to any more you know, infrastructure uh, issues. Uh, so you are only paying for the controller and the software technology, nothing else. Now we'll go into some of the machine learning techniques and methodologies within Plant Pro. Uh, so Plant Pro uses various machine learning techniques to, love, to learn the performance curves of equipments. Uh, the most common one that is used is a multivariate polynomial constraint least squares regression for chiller efficiency which essentially means that you know, it is a very carefully designed mathematical model, uh, which is then going to accurately learn the performance of the machine. We are going to embed specific requirements within the model uh, and we can come over uh, specific data gaps because we can extrapolate and correlate uh, things used on the HVAC and thermodynamic equations. Uh, we are going to learn the model and fit it into the closest data set as possible. So when the models are built, they are actually compared with the real-time performance and make sure that the, that the theoretical models or the machine learning models fit as close as possible to the real-time models and just not making the models for the sake of making a model which can be so far away. And we use all of this to make sure that the HVAC equipment, specifically the chillers, then uh, you know, work as efficiently as possible and we are able to accurately predict the efficiency of chiller plants uh, to with the least amount of error in our modeling. So just an example of how the machine learning uh, is approached uh, inside Plant Pro. So essentially on the very left, you can see uh, in the screen that uh, uh, we are plotting the actual power versus the predicted power. The optimization algorithm then minimizes the difference between the actual and the predicted power. Those are then turned into specific mathematical models where we predict the power as a function of cooling load, leaving chill water temperature and entering condenser water temperature. Essentially, there we use the entering condenser water temperature and leaving chill water temperature as a delta. And that is then converted into the COP curves or the kilowatts per ton curves of the chillers at various conditions. So in this chart on the right, what you can see is the performance of the same chiller at various conditions. As the delta T changes and as the load changes, the performance of the chiller changes as well. So we can model that, we can predict that, 
and hence we can ensure that you know the killer plant is operating in its most optimal stage under any condition. Uh, so plant flow, as I mentioned before, you know we do use mathematical optimization. We don't use brute force uh, or you know any of those other methods which are not uh, very nice. And they actually put a lot of strain on the system, and they are more trial and error machine learning models rather than an actual learning model. So PlanPro uses advanced mathematical optimization algorithms primarily for two reasons. One is for machine learning, uh, and second is for tiller plant optimization. So by optimization, we mean we'll find the optimal set points, the target loads, and the chiller combinations. We can predict all of that based on the machine learning models that are there, uh, which allow us to do that. Uh, again, one of the core plant pro optimization algorithms is a large-scale nonlinear programming solver, uh, which is then used uh, using a sequential convex programming interior point method. Uh, by using these technologies, we are able to find the optimum point or the optimum operation for a wide range of optimization problems, including nonlinear and convex or non-convex problems for inequality and equality constraints. Uh, so by using all of this, we have developed a feature called smart sequencing inside PlanPro. By using all the all the machine learning uh, and AI strategies that I mentioned about, uh, then we use uh, what we call smart sequencing. And smart sequencing does basic things. Uh, sorry, that's the three main things, which is an optimum staging. So it carries out the prediction of the cooling load to ensure that the chiller are enabled and disabled as needed and that the cooling demand is always met. Then we do the optimum sequencing. So selecting the most efficient combination of chillers that brings the lowest energy consumption and by optimum load balancing. So once the optimum sequence is selected, we will then again push those chillers into their most optimum sweet spots. So typically what happens in any chiller plant is that you know if you have three chillers running, they are all going to balance out to similar loads. So say if the building requires uh, you know, uh, them to balance out at 65% load, then all the three chillers will operate at roughly 65% load. And what you will get inside the building is also 65% load that you require of the total capacity. What Plan Pro does is that you know, eventually in the building, you will still get the 65% load that you need. But if it is running, if it needs to run three chillers to provide that combination, and that happens to be the most efficient combination using and including the pump power and the cooling tower energy, then it's going to see, uh, you know, which is the sweet spot for my individual chiller. And it will then push those chillers into their sweet spots. So for example, at the bottom of the, on my bottom left, you can see there are three different chillers and you can see that the optimal points for chiller one is about 300 kilowatts. Uh, the optimum point for chiller two is about 1000 kilowatts and the optimum point for chiller three is about 550 kilowatts. So what Planto then does is it makes sure that we will try and push the chillers into their sweet spots in a way that when the water is mixing from all the three chillers, we are providing the most efficient combination uh, and we are providing the, the requirements inside the building, but we are increasing the efficiency as well as the kilowatts per ton of the entire plant room by making sure my equipment is running at its most efficient spots. And uh, on the next slide uh, that comes up, you will be able to see uh, smart sequencing in action on a real site. So even on a 35 degree day, so 35 degrees Celsius, uh, you would agree is, is not, uh, you know, is not a cold day where we can play with, you know, the system. Uh, that means that it's a warm day and we need to make sure that, you know, we are doing the best for the plant room. We are getting a plant COP of almost seven, which is about 0 0.55 kilowatts per ton for the building. And we are doing that by making sure that, you know, uh, I'm pushing my chiller into the sweet spot. So for example, my chiller two, I am asking it to run at 11.8 degrees set point, uh, which is a capacity of almost 70%. And my chiller three, I'm asking it to provide nine and a half degrees Celsius, uh, which is a cooling capacity of just over 100%. And by having that, by mixing the waters, I am still meeting my set point in the plant room, which is of 11 degrees. And I'm not compromising on comfort, but I am getting the best efficiency out of the system. Another strategy uh, with machine learning that we use within plant row, and again, they are not just the only strategies, but in this particular presentation, I'm only highlighting a couple of them to show you how advanced the system is, is what we call a smart flow optimization. 
So inside the smart flow optimization, uh, we do variable primary flow, but we also do the most efficient condenser water flow technique to reduce the overall power usage in the chill water plant. Uh, this is based off scientific methodology based on data-driven machine learning and mathematical models. Uh, essentially, rule of thumbs do not work inside machine learning systems. Typically, the BMS systems are going to use rule of thumbs or you know, use prior learning to see, okay, this happens, so I can generalize that I can use this strategy. Unfortunately, in real life, you know, every plant is different and we are not able to do that. And uh, uh, we use, uh, uh, you know, uh, in our optimization, the fact that lower condenser water flow reduces the pump power usage, but in return, it is actually going to increase the chiller power usage. So we make sure that the trade-off is done in the best way by using predictive optimization and ensuring that my plant kilowatts per ton is the lowest uh, and not just ensuring that my chiller load pattern is lowest or my pump kilowatt pattern is lowest. So as an example here, the different conditions of load and water temperatures, the optimization algorithm finds different optimal flow for the same machine at different conditions. So at 30% load, keeping my chill water temperature and condensed water temperature is the same, uh, my optimal flow is calculated to be 50 liters a second on the example on the left, but for the same set of equipment, for the same configuration, if the load increases to 75%, then my actual flow becomes 75 liters a second. So this again is just to show that, you know, uh, we cannot just have a set and forget philosophy. It has to be a learning philosophy where, you know, things are learned over time and we are able to predict the performance and we go into the optimized set points as and when required. So, you know, there is a very common question that people ask us. Why can't the standard control strategy be derived for all sites? You know, it's simple, it's just math. Unfortunately, no, because different chillers and pumps, uh, the algorithm, uh, the optimization algorithm will find different set points at different conditions. So now taking the last example, but by changing the amount of, you know, by changing the pumps and the chillers. So now we can see that it's, they are both having the 50% load, the same temperature, two different sets, but uh, the set two, has an optimized flow of 85 liters a second, where the pumps were rated 14 kilowatts. And in the set one, where the pumps are rated 22 kilowatts, the optimum flow now becomes 60 liters a second. So again, you know, we need a dynamic self-learning optimization algorithm system uh, to give us the maximum energy savings uh, and cost savings. Again, just, uh, you know, showing the smart flow in, in action on a live site and showing you how the machine learning helps to model the performance in real time. Uh, and this one just shows us the results in a real world site uh, where smart flow was, uh, you know, put in for trials. Uh, and you can see that we were able to get 3.62% savings only from the smart flow optimization technique. Every other efficiency technique was disabled uh, to see how the smart flow technique affects the savings. And the real time results are showing that we are able to provide over 3.62% savings just by using this one technique. So now when we have multiple machine learning techniques, we can keep adding the performance and we can see that, you know, how the energy efficiency can improve drastically. Uh, so moving on from that, what I will do is I will very quickly take you through a case study uh, for a building in Southeast Asia so that, you know, you get to see how plant flow functions in the Southeast Asia weather, uh, not just, you know, I mean, like I'm from Australia, so not in the Australian weather, their conditions are very different, you know, in a hot and humid climate, how plant flow functions. So uh, as a high level, uh, we can say that, you know, the data uh, uh, in this case study is for a six month period running from June, 2020 to January, 2021. 18.8% energy savings were reported uh, as well as almost 45 hours of manpower savings per month were reported. So here we are now talking about uh, savings as a total cost of ownership, not just energy savings, but also the manpower savings that you are able to save using a system like PlanPro, using the predictive analytics and data-driven maintenance from PlanPro. So what is the setup of this system within uh, 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 PlanPro in this site? Uh, so this one was specifically three water cool chillers, uh, having four headed chill water pumps, four headed condenser pumps, and they had a very unique uh, condenser side system where 
they had three radiators with 12 VSD fans on each radiator. So this was like, you know, having like a micro cooling tower sort of a space, a uh, very unique system having multiple radiators, you know, uh, sorry, multiple VSD fans on the radiators instead of cooling tower. And I just highlighted this just to show that Tantro is very adaptable, very flexible, and we can take on, you know, various uh, uh, configurations as well. Now, the deployment on site was very simple. You know, uh, on the next slide, when you will see that on the left is the actual BMS panel that was then replaced, uh, you know, by uh, the Plan Pro hardware, where uh, just a Plan Pro edge controller along with a uh, remote, uh, remote connectivity kit and a power supply was put in and then just connected into the BMS system uh, via a local LAN port. Very simple connections. Uh, we are not even touching the BMS system. BMS system stays as it is and absolutely uh, working fine. Uh, then uh, once Plan Pro is set up, uh, you know, the Plan Pro dashboards are able to give us the detailed plan condition uh, at any point of time, also allow you to shut down or manually operate the plant from the screen if you did not want to have the plant running auto for servicing or, you know, whatever reasons. Moving on to the results of Plant Pro in this specific site. So as I said before in the summary, uh, Plant Pro was able to save 18% energy savings on this site. This is the actual chiller plant energy consumption under Plant Pro. Uh, and all of this is done using a proper IP MVP energy study. And uh, by doing that, uh, you know, we are able to uh, compare the actual as well as the predicted energy savings. And uh, you know, uh, uh, in a short period of time, uh, we are able to see there is a massive gap in energy savings and gives us 18.8%. Uh, the overall energy consumption uh, in red declined in comparison to the cooling load after the plant pro system was deployed. So what that says is that the cooling load or the tons, the output of the system never changed. Only the kilowatts used to provide the same cooling tonnage was improved. Hence showing that there is an improvement in kilowatts per ton. Uh, so it's not that we just reduce the amount of cooling, hence we are using less energy. We were still providing the same amount of cooling that is required, but the energy required to produce that cooling was drastically reduced. And this resulted in a 27% improvement in COP or kilowatts per ton. Uh, when the system was on the BMS control to compare to when the system was put under plant pro control. So that uh, is where all the energy savings come into picture. Also, at the same point, uh, there were significant manpower savings, uh, which uh, led to the lower total cost of ownership for the system. So typically, before Plan Pro, uh, the building managers used to, uh, you know, use up almost 50 hours of BMS contractors' work or labor to make sure that you know system is always tuned and you know make changes as required, adjust things to suit. Whereas after Plant Pro, they only required the BMS company to come in and tune, check the system for almost two and a half to three hours. So that is almost, you know, uh, uh, at the current energy or the labor rates, that was almost $13,000 of savings in six months, uh, just in manpower savings. We are not even talking the 18% energy savings in the plant energy consumption. That is even higher. So this is the extra savings. And this was the client feedback. Uh, after Plant Pro was deployed, initially they were very hesitant to install a machine learning and optimization system because you know they thought it's like a black box. We don't know what is happening, and you know it would be hard for us to you know intervene. But uh, since they have installed Plant Pro, they are very very happy with the performance, the optimization strategies, as well as the energy and the manpower savings they get out of it. And essentially, the client has provided feedback that. They, their engineers now just need to periodically monitor and adjust plant operations only when required. They can now focus on the critical BMS and site issues, and the customer is very willing to recommend plant pro at other sites in the region. So I think that was uh, the presentation of you know how we can reduce energy consumption and improve the efficiency of killer plants uh, using machine learning and AI techniques. Uh, I can now open the floor to anyone for any questions and answers that you might have. Uh, or happy to take yeah, any, any, any feedback. Thank you, Chirayu, for the very insightful sharing. If you could please stop screen sharing, we will start the Q&A session.
For those in the audience, please feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A section on the right-hand side of your screen. Just let me take a look. Cheer are you from your sharing itself? Uh, I do have some questions where I'm actually okay. interested to have a deeper understanding. Is the chiller plan automation using smart machine learning AI? That is, yes, absolutely. So the system that we use uh, definitely uses, uh, you know, artificial intelligence techniques as well as machine learning techniques embedded into PlanFlow, which is the product that we provide. Uh, definitely uses, you know, machine learning and hence we are able to get the type of results that I just presented in the case study. Brilliant. How can any of the existing R BMS actually uh, upgrade to smart machine learning AI? Would it be possible? Uh, you know, absolutely, absolutely. Again, as I said, you know, in, in, my, in my presentation, uh, PlanPro is provided on its own, own edge controller. So all it needs is a controller will go inside your building and it will communicate with your existing BMSs over a, over a single ethernet or a serial communication. And we can read and write all the information from the BMS. So we don't need to upgrade your entire system, just an extra machine learning optimization product is installed and it communicates with the BMS and uses all the existing infrastructure. Good to know, good to know. Okay, I have a question here from the audience. How is the baseline derived when the plan is already on plan pro optimization? Is the baseline obtained by calculation? So, uh, so, the, so the baseline is basically derived uh, using the actual energy consumption by the building from an independent energy meter and not from plan pro data, just to make sure that you know, the baseline is fully independent. Uh, so we use the actual energy consumption uh, and the actual meter data for the building. And we take that on and then build the baseline using IP MVP methodology. So IP MVP is a protocol that is used very widely in the industry, uh, which uh, has a set of rules and guidelines. And using that, you know, there can be no doubts or calculations on how the baseline or the predicted savings are calculated. So we don't use internal plan pro data to do that. Uh, we could do it, we could absolutely use it, but just to avoid questions, on the legitimacy of the baseline, we use independent raw meter data if that is available from the client. Amazing. We do have a, another question. Do you have solutions for VRF systems? Uh, yes, we have solutions for VRF systems. Uh, it's just not plan pro, but we have other solutions uh, that we can. And yeah, uh, Mr. Boone, I mean, like maybe we can reach out to you after uh, the presentation privately and we can have a chat about your requirements then. Were there any challenges faced when connecting to OEMs, Chirayu? No, absolutely. We have never had issues when connecting to OEMs because uh, PlanPro uh, is based on a very open technology, very open framework. So we can easily communicate with any BMS uh, or any OEM systems. We use standard backnet modbus, you know, all the standard protocols. So there has really never been an issue. And again, the fact that you know, Plan Pro is used by various OEMs already. So we do not have any issues you know, uh, at all uh, working with OEMs or other manufacturers. Next up, how do you eliminate other factors affecting energy consumption? Example, the weather, occupancy, or even a change in operation, etc. cetera. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, so we actually consider exactly the weather, the occupancy, all of those as a part of our uh, baseline modeling as well. And based on the conditions, uh, the machine learning and the modeling EI and PC does consider you know, the weather. If we predict uh, the weather for the next hour, uh, we see how the, how the cooling water trends are happening as well. Uh, so we use all those information to make sure that you know, we are always uh, on track and dynamically update uh, the algorithms as required. So it's not a set and forget solution. It is continuously looking at the input parameters and continuously updating the output solutions. Amazing, okay. How do you actually convince um, owners to let the solution control the chillers in uh, real time though? Uh, essentially, as I said, you know, so with Plan Pro, uh, uh, as the name of the product is performance, reliability, and then optimization. So everything we do is within the scope and the constraints. So if the building manager or the facility manager has certain constraints, 
the plan flow system will definitely respect those constraints and we will only control within those constraints. Once we can demonstrate and do that, only then we will ask, is it possible to you know, expand the constraints even more? Uh, and then the savings are achieved as we expand the constraints more, but everything is done within the safe, uh, you know, safety limits advised by the OEMs or the manufacturers. Then what is being predicted in the predictive control? Why prediction is needed at all? This is a question from Dr. Man. Okay, so uh, essentially, I mean, the predictive, uh, so essentially prediction is required uh, because, you know, absolutely we cannot see into the future. If you could change the future, that was great. So prediction is required to predict what the load of the building could be in the future using the current variables and the weather trends. And we use those predictions to then see what control algorithms and what strategies I need to meet that future demand that we are predicting. I see. Interesting. Okay, brilliant. Um, we do have many questions coming up. Maybe just let me have a look. Um, how do you eliminate other factors affecting energy consumption? Uh, I, think I think we took this question that. already. Yes. Oh, how about this question? How is the hardware attached to the BMS? Uh, the the, uh, the plan pro hardware is attached to BMS using an Ethernet cable or a serial backnet or Modbus connection. So it's simple one one connection only. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we do have more questions from the audience, Shivayu, but unfortunately, time doesn't permit us to continue. For those whose questions have yet to be answered, please feel free to contact Shivayu and conserve IT at the digital booth directly. Before we close this session, can I invite Shivayu? to say a couple of last words for those viewing right now. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patsy. And I would also like to thank the audience. I think you have been fantastic. And I can see from the amount of questions coming up that, you know, you found the session very interactive and, you know, very interesting. Uh, I mean, like, I do apologize for the shortage of time we have, but uh, I will go through all the questions, you know, that you have put up. And I'll try and reach out to all of you, you know, in the next couple of days. And maybe we can set up a future meeting uh, with you guys or I'll try and answer your questions, you know, in the chat box as, as possible. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like, please feel free to reach out to conserve it uh, on the virtual booth. Uh, we are one of the exhibitors at the BEX show, and you will also be able to find my information uh, as one of the exhibitors or participants in the show as well. So please feel free to reach out to me there as well, but I'll definitely make it a point to reach out to all of you over the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Patsy. Thank you very much. And with that, on behalf of Bex Asia, I would like to thank Chirayu, Conserve it and all the attendees for joining us and sharing your insights into the topic. Do take note that a recording of this session will be available on demand after the show. You will be redirected back to the Bex Asia platform after this session. I encourage everyone to continue to explore and chat with the various experts at their booths. You can also find out about the other live conference and technical webinars to taking place. Thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule. We look forward to seeing you in more of our webinars coming soon. Stay healthy and goodbye for now.